Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm going to play with the crazy dogs and crazy cats. I recently finally picked up the crazy dogs and crazy cats. Had to buy them because I'm a dog and cat person. I do have a lot of videos I've done with the crazy birds, but these are sized well to go with each other, which is what I was inspired by because they looked like they could be friends. And what I did was match up the ones that I thought could make a cute little scene of some sort and relate to each other. You could also do it within the cat's family or within the dog's family, but it's kind of fun as, you know, kind of, I, I want to be one of those households with dogs and cats. Right now I don't have a dog, that's going to change soon. But I'm going to zip quickly through the coloring because I really am mostly going to talk about the colors I'm using. So I'm speeding this up to twice the normal speed don't really color this fast but I'm using the E5s in order to do the, the dogs all the E5s family and I'll be using grays for the cats and I wanted to show you a bunch of things about the E5s and that is that the color of the finished image depends on how much of each of the colors that you use on the dog a lot of people will buy exactly the markers I use in something because they want it to look exactly like what I've colored or what you've found on somebody else's video. You want exactly those colors to replicate it. Well, I hate to tell you this, but depending on how much of each color you use, your image will come out different than somebody else's image. Because here I can use a bunch of different colors in the E5's family from the darkest to the lightest and if I leave some white highlights, great. He's a dog who looks like he's got a little bit of lighter color all the way to darker. In some of these others, you're going to see he's going to be, a, there's going to be really dark dogs. Other ones are really light dogs, but they all use the same markers. So that's one of the things that I, I know is frustrating to folks. They want to buy exactly the markers used by the artist that they saw on the blog or on a, a video. And that is why it's so hard to replicate. So unless you use the exact same amount, and it's even hard for me to replicate it from one image to the other. If I were to color the same image over and over, I often would not get the same amount of ink down and the color would come out slightly different. So with any of these, you can add spots to customize them. And for this particular one, I don't do it throughout the rest of these, but on this little guy, I made him like my punch who has half a gray face and he's got some brown spots on him and stuff. So you can customize any one of these, even though a lot of the cats have stripes on them. That's just the way they're drawn. And for each one of them, I'm gonna do a little bit of shading on the ground and I'm just making the shading go out to a point. And you'll see throughout each one of them, I'm really doing the same thing, almost a line of shadow um, off into a light color so that it just fades out slowly. And that's a really good way to ground something. Now these two were far apart from each other because one looked angry, one looked scared. And otherwise, you know, I tried to relate each one of these pairs of critters. Here the, the kitty is looking a little bit like, you know, scared or I'm not really sure if he's ready to play or exactly what the deal is with that dog. But the dog is kind of looking all goofy and happy, which is what you know, a lot of dogs and cats will have that kind of relationship where one wants to play and be goofy and the other one just wants to sit and hiss at them. So for this kitty, I colored the whole base of the kitty in a light color. And the only time I'm, I'm using the T's throughout this, except for on this one where I used a W marker. So you can see that you can change colors. You don't have to stay with all warms, all cools, all T's or all N's. You can use a combination of them and be just fine. They'll all work together. And it'll just give you a little browner look if you end up using a W along with your others. Now, I don't recommend anybody needs to have the T's or the N's. If you get your W's and your C's, you're usually pretty good because you've got a good combination of light to dark in each one. And you can have some cools and some warms and be just fine for your coloring. For this guy, I decided to color the E53 as the base color. And I do end up coloring over most of it, but at least this gets the paper wet before I get started. I did do a little bit of light shading on his snout. And then I went in with the almost darkest brown in order to create some shadows. Now on these particular stamps, 
the person who drew them did a lot of lines in the areas where the shadows would be for the most part there's some of the lines that are just stray sketchy lines they're not necessarily shadows but i'm mostly following along where the shadows are drawn that cross hatching is intended to be an actual shadow rather than being really a, a sketchy line to just add to that look and then i'll go in with my e55 now e55 can be a little on the greenish side it can feel that way depending on what colors you use with it so some markers will change a little bit in their flavor depending on what you're using but with the e53 under it it doesn't tend to go green that way now here i'm using my e55 to put down some base color and i'm trying to leave some of that light color showing at least for the moment so i wanted to soften out all of the areas where that e57 was and then go over it really quickly and not scribble a whole lot. If you scribble a lot, you're going to end up losing a lot of the difference between the lights and the darks. But I am covering up most of that E53 underneath, but having it underneath of that really helps to keep that kind of weird greenness from showing up. And again, same thing on the shadow, just do basically a line under it. Each one of these is drawn with different shading. I'm not really worrying about a light source for this. If I were, there would be some things I could apply to the shadows, but for the most part on images like these, I'm keeping these really simple for cards. I'm just doing some quick swooshes across them with progressively lighter colors. And each one of their eyes gets a little bit of blue in it because I think that just makes them glow a little, a little nicely. My card designs are all really basic and simple. I just added them onto card bases that were black. Now these two, I decided to do some masking so that I could make the kitty standing behind the dog, looking a little bit surprised. I guess they both look a little bit shocked. And on this dog, I wanted him to be kind of a whitish dog, but I wanted him to feel like he'd been out in the mud. So maybe he'd had uh, a little bit of wrestling going on outside and been outside playing. And he was gonna have a brown nose instead of a black nose, because dogs can have that. Even some dogs have pink noses. And then in a few spots, some in the shadow spots, and mostly along his feet and everything, I put some of the darker colors. And I'll continue to add the next to the darkest and that sort of thing, just to add a few spots where he's gonna have some, some darker shades. And slowly blend that with some lighter colors, but being careful not to color the whole dog, but give him enough color that he just looks like he's got some character to him. He's not just a totally light dog. And you can see he's got a different color flavor than the other dogs we've already colored just because I'm using different amounts of different ones of these E5s. But I'm getting a lot of variety. So you don't have to have a gajillion different markers in order to get some variety in your coloring. So with this kitty, I decided to see what else I could do. I'm kind of limited in the gray since I'm not adding too much in terms of browns to my kitties. So on this one, I decided to make it a black one. With coloring black objects, you don't really want to necessarily color a light gray. A lot of people try to color with a very a light, you know, at uh, number one, number two, but your, your light colors on a dark animal are going to be still dark colors. So there's a little bit of practice you need to do in making some colors that look really dark but leave a little bit of light shining through. Not a ton, but I'm just gonna go over this with a T6. And you can do these same things, as I said, with W's or C's, depending on what you have. And you can see as I go over it, it's leaving some depth, but it's adding enough color to it that it feels like it's a black cat. And again, there's the, uh, the blue for the eyes and using a little bit of a zero marker to uh, soften some of that out and my horizontal shadows. Just give it a little bit of a scribble, a little bit of softness with another color. You can use a, a very light gray or a uh, colorless blender to soften that out and then put it on a card base. And when I send these, I can either come up with some really fun sentiments to write inside, even hand write my own crazy sentiments. If one of these pictures ends up seeming like a conversation that I might have with that friend, so the reactions that these two critters are having to each other on each card are gonna make for some fun cards that I can send to friends to make them smile. 
Now this little dog is going to be a very dark dog. So you're going to see how the same color combination can look like a very dark brown dog. I'm just going to use one of the mid-tones for the lightest instead of going with one of the light ones and adding a good amount of this very dark E59 color. As I said, it's all in the amount of the color that you put in there. If you put in less, then you're going to leave more of the light showing. So it, it, it's even kind of a fun exercise to take one of your animal stamps and color it, you know, 10 different times and see if you can create a light colored looking animal, a dark colored looking animal, but using the same markers, just so you can get an idea of how much marker you need to put down in order to make them look like what you want them to look like. Because it's always fun to be able to customize whatever you're doing on your cards to send to the recipient. Because if it looks like their dog, or if it looks like your dog, since you're the one sending it to them, those are both great options to do when you're, you're doing some coloring for your cards to make them look like they are custom made for your recipients. So on this kitty, I decided to make a mostly gray. So I'm using a couple different grays and adding, as I said before, shadows are in the areas where the lines are on this one so that the artist has given us some guidance and we're able to know kind of what the intention is for where the shadows would be. They may or may not match the dogs that they're with and that's okay. As long as you're doing some fun shading for the most part, most people will never notice whether it's from the left hand side or the right hand side, so don't stress out about it too much. Again, I'm adding just some really simple lines that go underneath the animals to create those shadows and literally just make them come to a point on one side or the other and soften them out in a variety of ways. You could also just put a block of color down below the animals and not really worry too much about shadows underneath of them because that would also be fun on these really simple cards. On this one I thought I'd try to see if I could make it a very light yellowish looking dog with these same marker colors and the E50 is a very yellow pale yellow color so it worked really well as the base color and I'm being careful in how much of a mid-tone color that I'm using for my shadows. I just didn't use the darkest color and if you look on my blog today, there's one picture that has all of these dogs and all of the colorings of, of these in it so that you can get the comparison of all of those E5s and how they actually work out when coloring. And you can see the infinite variety of colors that you can get as you, as you experiment with one set of markers. So I'm just softening it out with progressively lighter colors until they start to feel like they're kind of coming together. And there is my light colored dog. So on all of these, I'm adding the same colors basically for my eyes and for their little collars. But if you were gonna use a different card base color, I just used black card bases, but you could make the collars match that. You could put some just solid, simple colors in the backgrounds on these. They would be really cute. On this one, I'm doing a very light colored cat. So I'm using a, a T0 to blend out some of that little slightly darker T color and soften it out quite a bit, give them little pink ears and pink nose. But then I can take that E50, that same color that I used on the dog, add just a little tiny bit of it to the cat and change the tone of the cat as well. So it's a really easy thing to do to change these up just a little by glazing some color over top. Now the shadow on this, I started getting complex and I realized after a while, I just didn't feel like being that complex because it had gotten too fussy because I was trying to figure out the tail would actually have a shadow that would come out. And then I started coloring into the image and was gonna have to fix that. And it was like, oh man, I'm not making a mess of it. So I decided to soften everything out and just add a whole bunch of light gray to it and stretch that color out. So it looked more like those shadows were blending into the ground that's already there as opposed to creating a really simple shadow and just left it at left it be and didn't fuss with trying to make that shadow shape aside from leaving that little bit of tail there so it gives you a little bit of an idea that there's a crazy shadow but without being overly fussy and here we have this little dog who looks like he's had a few drinks. I'm not sure if he's spent too much time with his head in the toilet, 
and drinking too much water or something, but he's looking a little bit too happy. <laughs> but I'm shading him with some tea on top of that very light brown color. So it gives him, again, another look from the same set of markers. And I'm just going to add a you know, couple little strokes here and there. Not huge, not getting too fussy with it, so I still have that light color coming through. Give him his pink tongue and his pink ears. And there's something funky in the line on the collar, but just color over it. No one will notice. And then there's this kitty. I was kind of leaning on, leaning on to him. So maybe the kitty and the doggy had themselves their own little issue, their own little party. Who knows? This could be the aftermath of way too much fun with these two little guys. So originally I was thinking I'd make him a gray kitty and give him kind of a white belly because a lot of animals will have a white tummy to them. And so I can do that by taking my T4 and stopping short of the belly getting all the rest of the animal filled in and then use a lighter marker to just color that in and blend that color out and even get lighter as I get down to the lower part of the belly. And then I thought, you know, I think I needed some more punch of color in this one because the dog on the right hand side was so light. So I just went right over it. You can always go darker with your Copic coloring. It's just a little tougher to go lighter. Than, than darker, so always remember that. Don't go too dark unless you're really ready to commit to it. And here's where I was really just deciding I was gonna just go ahead and commit to it. It's totally fine. And then I'll add some more color to just do some blending and start to, to work it into the whole image. And you could do all of these animals, of course, instead of making them in realistic colors, you could do them like pinks and purples and all different kinds of fun colors to do great things. The dogs are the happier ones, I think. So they seem to, you know, be a little more on the whimsical side. I think I like them best out of the bird, cat, and dog series of these from Tim Holtz. So you might see me using the dogs a little bit more because I do like them. They're kind of fun. And there's something more cartoony about them rather than just being kind of, I don't know, zombie-ish. <laughs> the kitties and the birdies can feel kind of zombie-ish, I guess. So I'm adding some shadows underneath of this one as well. Do some blending out and soften that color. And for the most part, if you get a little shadow underneath of the object and then add some more to the base of it, you're totally good to go because people are gonna be looking at those cute animals. They're not gonna really care about the shadows. So that is my video for you for today. If you're interested in anything with the crazy birds, these are the three videos that I've done with the crazy birds. And you're welcome to click on any one of those to check them out. You can hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet done so because I put out lots of videos. And if you wanna see more from me, you can do that. There's more on my blog as always and the products used here are in the description down below. I'll talk to you guys later. Have an awesome day and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.